Hello and Randy here playing Farming Simulator 22 and welcome back to the Upper Mississippi River Valley since last episode. I finished uh, cultivating and picking up stones here on fields 27 and 28. As a reminder again, we did uh, combine those fields together. Oh, let's see one, sir. How good of a job? Oh, we missed a little bit there on that one, didn't we? Okay, well, that was, uh, I'm going to blame course play on that one. Oh, missed a few over there, too. Unless that's, is that plowing or stones? It's probably stones, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is stones. Okay. Yeah, because you do have uh, red here for plowing as well, which you know, kind of hard to tell the difference uh, sometimes. Is that stones or is it plowing? Uh, but yeah. Oh, actually, like over here, this is probably actually uh, plowing, I bet. Yeah, plowing on uh, field 42 there that we own as well. So anyway, we got that done. I uh, had, like I said, course play pick up the uh, stones for me there. That was a nice, uh, I don't know, two hour long job or something like that. It's like, you know what, course play? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should really, actually, you know what? Uh, do we have all the stones off the field at the moment? Checking. Yes, I think all our fields are stone free. Hmm. I don't know. What are you folks thinking? I am thinking, let's see, where's our game settings here? Where's, where's field stones? There we go. Yeah, we're, uh, okay. I, I said back when I started the series, I, mean, I was going to try to play this series with the uh, stones turned on. Well, you folks seen how long it lasted. Now, mind you, we made it to, like, episode... What are we? 70-something here, right? So we made it to, like, episode 70 before I finally turned that rubbish off. But, uh, yeah, we, we turned field stones off. I'm, I'm sorry, Evan. That, uh, that has got to be the single stupidest feature here in Farming Simulator that I've ever seen. So, well, maybe I shouldn't say ever, but at least in Farming Simulator 22, that's definitely got to be one of the stupidest ones. So, okay. Let's uh, get course by setup here. Uh, start off with a rolling field 42 here, by the way. Uh, it occurred to me here in between episodes, I haven't rolled this field yet. We are planting soybeans, so might as well. We'll generate the course for that one. And again, as I've said many times, just as a reminder of one, I don't necessarily uh, recommend rolling just for the uh, financial sake of things here, because I don't know that rolling necessarily pays for itself. But hey, something to do. Uh, something you would commonly do with soybeans in real life too, just to roll the field. Uh, pushes any dirt, especially stones. You really want to keep those stones pushed down. Uh, with soybeans, that when you're harvesting really close, or if not on the ground when it comes to soybeans with the combines. So uh, when you're riding that header right along the ground, you don't want anything that's sticking up. You want to try to keep that ground level smooth. You know, again, the stones, keep them pushed down in the ground. So that's basically the purpose of rolling the uh, soybeans. You're rolling other crops, that one, your corn, unless you're, you're dealing with problems here, corn, your corn is typically standing. <laughs> Although, for those of you watching some of the farming videos that are happening this year, sounds like down corn is a bit of a problem here. Just a bit of the weird weather we have, or I don't know, something with the uh, the various varieties are causing problems. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I've definitely seen a couple of the uh, farmers uh, complaining about that one here this year. So yeah, again, typically yeah, when your corn is you know up in the air, so you don't have to worry about rolling corn ground. You're never typically dragging your header on the ground. Again, unless you're dealing with uh, down corn, which uh, some farmers are this year. Anyway, we're going to head back over to field 27 and 28 here. Uh, this field is finally ready to be planted, I think, anyway. At least it should be, hopefully. I've got the uh, 9RX640 over here. And we got our big planter set up here. I suppose I could have used the uh, row crop planter here as well, but I just happened to grab this planter because, like, I don't know you folks, I kind of like using this particular planter. Although, again, the uh, the row crop planter probably would have been a much simpler setup here. <laughs> yeah, this is quite the planter setup here. Uh, might have to get the uh, tender over here for this as well. I'm not sure if we have enough seed for this or not. We'll find out. We're sitting at 62%. Actually, we might have enough seed, Evan, because... Well, actually, maybe I shouldn't say that, because this field, I think, is probably bigger. It's 40... Yeah, I'm going to say 27 and 28 are probably bigger than field 42. So... I'm pretty sure we started out with a full tank here when we started on 42, so we're down to 62% here. So yeah, there might be enough. We'll see once. Yeah, we don't need any fertilizer here for this. Uh, I am still pulling the tank behind it, though, because I just don't want to have to detach the tank and, like, try to reattach it. I'm sure you folks will probably agree. Yeah, trying to reattach that tank. Oh, my goodness. Yep, nope. I don't want to try to have to uh, back this setup up. That does not look like any fun at all. Mind you, I could probably get it a little ways up when, you know, take your time, go slow, watch your hitches, uh, make sure everything's lined in properly. But oh boy, top it off too. I mean, we're using an articulated tractor. Oh, yeah, that just sounds painful, one. 
Gotta say, too, I think I uh, did a pretty good job here leveling out the ditch. It's looking pretty good from what I've seen here so far. We'll just kind of keep an eye on it here again, too, while we're a plant. See if we missed anything or not. Also, uh, you're probably seeing in the corner there, I do have the weeder sitting there ready to go. So once we get the uh, field planted here, we'll run the weeder across it. Hopefully that should eliminate any weeds we might be seeing. And I'll probably uh, probably try to take care of that in between episodes here as well, and so you folks don't have to sit here watching, you know, of course, play go up and down the field for like uh, 10 hours weeding. I think it was like five or six on the last field. So just to give you folks an idea, you know what I should do, Evan? Genius idea here. We should go buy a bigger weeder. I don't think it matters at this stage, Evan, what weeder I use. Uh, again, I'm using the... I forget what the game calls it here again. If I can find the weeder category here, where are the weeders? Where are the weeders? That's actually a very good question. Stone, mulchers, plows, cultivators, disc arrow, power, power, power. There we go. <laughs> Spaders, planters, rollers, sprayers, weeders. There we go. Yep. So, yeah, we could definitely all look at uh, maybe like the Bergo here. That is up to 27 meters wide. Again, we're using, is it that one? No. Where, there we go. That's the one reason right there. The, uh, the Chop Star. And that is because this one will do up to, uh, is it medium weeds or something like that? Yeah, small and medium weeds. Again, most of the rest, I will just do the small weeds. But again, we don't have any weeds at this point, so I don't think it'll really matter. The horse aggravation, that is 24 meters. Yeah, I think that would definitely be a really good idea. I and mean, that'll definitely speed up our process here. I forget how big the current one is. Yeah, nine meters. Wow, nine meters. My goodness. It'll take like 12 hours, huh? Or go up to 27 if we bump that up in size. Okay. Kind of like the looks of this uh, horse one here. I don't mind giving that one a try, maybe. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, you know what? Let's, uh, oh, that's more expensive, though. Wow. 59 for that one or 85 for this one. Yeah, we got plenty of money. Well, actually, technically, we do not. <laughs> okay. Uh, might have to borrow a little bit more money here. We got it. Probably going to want a bigger tractor to pull that with. Maybe I'll uh, send the 8R down to grab that or something like that. I've got our uh, Fent over on the uh, roller here at the moment, so 8R seems like it'd be an appropriate size tractor to pull that, I think, maybe. Actually, you know what? What's it say? How much horsepower does it claim to need here? Uh, 200. Okay. Yeah, so that, that probably rules out the Kubota there, by the way. I think Kubota is, uh, is at a 140 or 160, something like that. So unless we got the absolute largest Kubota tractor, probably be pushing it. We want something more in the 300, maybe 4 or 350 at least, I'm going to say. Speaking of the uh, weeder, by the way, I just got a comment. You know, we're going to stop here real, good, real quick here again. Moment. I have seen these style weeders work in real life. Well, maybe I, let me let me rephrase this. Evan. I have seen these style weeders in real life. I question how well they work because it, it doesn't seem like they work to me. Um, this style, I, I've obviously, I've seen this style one. Uh, this, you know, row crops, uh, corn or soybeans, if, as long as they're in you know, like the 30 inch rows or whatever. Uh, these obviously clean out between the rows, but like this style, I don't know. doesn't seem like they work to me, but I I'm just curious. I'm just kind of curious as to how well those work. Again, the style we currently own, I mean, I am familiar with those. And I mean, yeah, again, at least in between the rows, I would, uh, those weeders absolutely decimate the weeds. Nothing like using iron to take care of weeds. The iron is pretty effective. I mean, I, I don't think they've uh, got a weed out there yet that is uh, resistant to iron. That, of course, is a little joke there, but not because, yeah, some weeds are now becoming uh, chemical resistant. And this is uh, mainly due to the fact uh, farmers uh, may be watering down their chemicals a little too much and not putting down a strong enough uh, killing dose of it on the weed, everyone. 
You know, if the weed manages to survive being sprayed, and sometimes the weed can develop resistance to said spray then, and yeah, of course, that is a bit of a problem. And it's actually starting to become a more of a problem here. Having to use uh, different chemicals slash stronger chemicals, different combinations there to, you know, just uh, knock said weed out. Also, we seem to be uh, struggling a little bit going up the hill here. Wow. 9RX640. I think we need that uh, 690. Or maybe if we were to go red. No, no, never mind. We're, no, no, never going red. No, no, can't do that one. Forget I even mentioned going red. No, oh, sacrilege. Sacrilege, I'm telling you. But anyway, if, you know, if we were to go red, we could talk about that uh, new uh, case. Was it 715? I think that was the number. I'm trying to remember the number now off the top of my head. But yeah, the new uh, 700 horsepower case quad tracks. It'll be interesting to see here in the next uh, couple years, too. Uh, Big Bud is obviously, of course, working on their large tractor here as well. Uh, supposed to be a much simpler tractor, it sounds like, in some ways. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, compares or how farmers, you know, compare like that type of tractor to, say, you know, a John Deere or Case Quad track. Uh, these tractors are obviously, you know, so complex at this point that... Uh, we're getting to the point where the days of farmers fixing these tractors, yeah, at least this type of tractor, yeah, that, that might be a little bit difficult. I mean, you know, the, the basic stuff, of course, maybe, but yeah, just diagnosing these tractors, like I said, they are so complex now, it, it's ridiculous. That's why the whole uh, right to repair argument is kind of a joke when you think about it yeah okay you, sure uh to my knowledge john Deere does not stop you from working on this tractor at all but uh yeah you're gonna have to have the knowledge to work on that tractor wow and the complexity of it Well, the tractor seems to pull it just fine here on the flat ground. So I've got a little bit of a hill coming up here again. Actually, a bit of a hilly field here. Most of our fields here on this map are, I would say, mostly flat. You know, a little bit of slow hills going on. But this actually uh, might have some bigger hills on it here. Like you were seeing here a few moments ago, struggling to pull up that hill there. Should have used, uh, just realized, should have used GPS here for this edge. Oh, well. I think we're doing uh, pretty good here going around the outside edge. Probably try to get uh, one more headland here yet as well. Or actually, you know what? No, probably three more headlands. I mean, give ourselves enough uh, room to uh, turn around here. As you can probably imagine, this, this apparatus takes a little bit of space to turn around in.
And while we're going around the field, Evan, just a reminder, if you haven't already clicked the uh, subscribe button, don't forget to do so. Always very much uh, appreciated. And, of course, once you are subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications there as well. Get notified of the latest, greatest uh, Upper Mississippi River episode going live. And don't forget, too, if you'd like to leave a comment down below, always enjoy reading all your folks' uh, comments here. And we'll probably get to some comments here in just a few moments as well. And don't forget, down below in the uh, description, Evan, you can also find uh, links to all the rest of my uh, social media channels if you'd like to follow over there. Find all that information again down below in the uh, description. Oh, hey, there's the end of the ditch there. Looks a little bit uh, funny with how that is. I suppose if I get bored, I could probably maybe do a little paint in there just to make that ditch disappear, I think, maybe. I think it'll let me uh, paint that ditch out of there. That's where the other uh, ditch was there, of course. And yeah, looking out across them, I think, like I said, I think we did a pretty good job getting rid of that. I am happy with the uh, results here so far. Uh, you know, again, as we've been going across them, I mean, I've had to, you know, just smooth out a few areas yet. It's just really hard, you know, when you're looking from the top down view uh, to see how well you've actually smoothed it out. Even uh, like when you zoom down, it kind of zooms down and in a little bit. Even from that view, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell. Not until you're actually like on the ground and you know look at it this way, you're like, oh yeah, that uh, that maybe needs a little bit more smoothing. Uh, fortunately, again, the smoothing tool of one, it doesn't seem to like affect the terrain, like you have to replow it or anything like that. So that is kind of nice. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back over to this corner here and just uh, start there. Not entirely sure what's up with the uh, the missing spots, but I'm not sure. Oh, there's some stones there too, huh? If that's from the disc, or if that's from, I'm not sure what that's from. I one. Oh, you know what? No, that's got to be from the stone picker, isn't it? This looks like this ground has been cultivated. Well, high speed disc. It's uh, got the stubble tillage on it. Which would make sense. I don't think I missed anything with the uh, the stubble tillage that I know of. So, which uh, by the way, again for uh, finishing up the stubble tillage, Evan, uh, what I did is I had the other hired worker working on the other end of the field. So we had both uh, the ninety six twenty and uh, the nine RX working on that job. I think it's probably a perfect example of one where I'd probably need to change the setting of the uh, lift and lower early and late settings there. Uh, again, when it comes to course plane, I don't know if I've changed them with this one or not. That's a good reminder. Let's go check right now. Uh, so we want to raise tools. Yeah, this is the way I prefer to see it, everyone. We want to raise the tools late and we want to lower them early. So that means when you start out, everyone, it's going to lower it before you get to the point where it needs to lower it. And then same thing when it gets to the end of the row it's going to raise it late and that will of course probably give you a little bit more overlap or uh, when you're using a tool like this that apparently has something wrong with it it should actually hopefully overlap and not miss something there as you can see we do have a little bit of stone in this uh, missing spot here of course right handful of missing spots Evan and we got how many stones Speaking of watch, I think that trailer was like a third full or something like that. Uh, by the time we finished picking up stones. Uh, for those of you who have not seen uh, our OP stone pickup thing, it, uh, I think it holds 50 or 100,000 liters of stones or something like that. It, it's some absurd number. It's also, uh, yeah, got an absurd wing thing on it. It's, it's just, uh, it's the most ridiculous stone picker thing you've ever seen, ever, at least in my opinion. And again, as I've said before, when I really don't go much for the OP equipment here in the game, I, I like to keep the equipment somewhat realistic. In that case, Evan, I definitely made an exception. Like, yeah, using the regular stone picker, Evan, I would be here for hours. I mean, again, I mean, it took, it was either one or two, I think it was hour, I think it was just under two hours to uh, pick the stones on this field. And that was using course play, so. And that thing is, is it either 12 or 15 meters wide? 
yeah, I think it's 15 meters wide, or 14. And maybe that's what it is, 14 meters wide, something like that. I so 14 meters wide took like two hours. Can you imagine how long it would have taken I if I used a six meter wide one and then uh, had to empty the stones every, I think it was a 2,000 liters or something like that, whatever that uh, stone picker in game holds. Oh my goodness, that one like, that's ridiculous. Probably would have taken 10 hours just to uh, get this field done. And I'm sorry, I don't know about you folks, I am not spending 10 hours of my life picking up stones in the game here. That is ridiculous. Might be acceptable in real life to do that, but uh, I'm sorry, I don't think so in the game. Anyway, as I said a moment ago, let's head over to the comment section here, see what's what you folks had to uh, say. Ooh, and we're down to 55% on our seed already there, by the way. Just uh, going around the field about one and a half times now. Uh, Christopher was saying good video as usual. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, Hatcher was also saying the same thing. Good video. Thank you very much for that as well. Oh, boy. We seem to be uh, continuing the theme here. Sean says the same thing. Uh, uh, great video as always. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I have an idea for your fertilizer problem. Instead of using liquid fertilizer, Wangen, why don't you get another uh, C850 cart? Uh, set it up like you have that one, but instead the seeds put solid fertilizer. Easier to fill. And you would just need to get another convey all trailer. Ah, that is an interesting idea there, Sean. I am not sure if that would work or not. Can you pull, and maybe I'll have to ask you folks in the comments here, can you pull another C850 cart behind this one? It seems like a bit of a ridiculous setup. I, I think what most farmers would do at that point is you'd split this and do seed and fertilizer, right? But that is an interesting idea. I'd be curious if that would work or not. Yeah, okay, actually, uh, as far as real life goes, I think I can safely answer and say it would not. And the reason I say that, Evan, I suppose you could maybe make it work. You'd have to somehow have, yeah, I suppose you could make it work. I mean, you have to run the lines all the way through this tank to the back of this tank and have it, yeah. I suppose you could make that work. Probably a reason why I don't think I've ever seen that done, though. Oh, we're going to clear the pole. Not quite. Well, that kind of sucks. Let's just uh, raise up that corner here a minute. Maybe. Okay, I hear it making sounds. Oh, yeah, okay. It's raising up all the individual ones. There we go. There we go. A little bit difficult trying to turn around here. There we go. I probably should actually do some uh, smoothing down on this end of the field. Seems a little rough down here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hera Human was saying, uh, in real life, the OSR has to be cultivated under pre-germination. Is that possible here? Hmm. Pre-germination, huh? And uh, when he says OSR, I believe he is talking about, actually... Let's see, what one would show it? I guess this would uh, show it right here, right? Our oilseed radish. So oilseed radish, I believe that's his OSR that he's talking about. So pre-German, yeah, you should be able to, uh, well, I'm not sure actually at what point in the game here you have to actually plow that in. Uh, typically, I do not do much with oil seed radish, as you folks probably are well aware. Um, something we could actually try, I suppose. That'd be kind of a fun little thing in the game here. Maybe do some oil seed radish. 
but I, I believe as long as it starts to come up i believe you can cultivate it in under at that point that's my understanding i could be wrong though interesting question Uh, Norton was saying, I like the uh, landscaping tool and is so much better than having to use Giant's Editor. Wow, that is actually, uh, I don't know, that, that's pretty bad if you ask me if, if the game actually has better terraforming controls than the editor. Because, I mean, like, Giant's Editor is what you, well, I guess you don't have to use that to edit the map, but uh, it's what you can use to, uh, you know, terraform the map. When you're making a map, everyone, that's what you would use, right? Okay, one more pass down this side. We'll have our second headland done. Now, like I said, I think we'll definitely go for a third one here as well. Got plenty of room on this side of the field to turn around. Oh, boy. Dropping it down in the ditch there a little bit. Nothing to see, everyone. Nothing to see there. We're all good. Okay, let's get some uh, GPS set up here a moment. Turn that on. And I think we're going to be doing 90 degrees here at this angle. Auto width. Be a pretty good, I guess. We'll find out. Curious too. I'm gonna see once if we actually end up having enough uh, seed for this field here or not. Pretty sure this edge of the field is straight, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I uh, got a mostly square field here. There's just a couple spots on the field where it kind of juts out a little bit. Or just moves just you know a little bit, not much, right? But not perfectly square, and they're not perfectly straight edges. Except I think this one might be, or it's it's like real close, right? Also, I just realized something. I have an R fertilizer. If we're planting soybeans. We shouldn't be putting down fertilizer, right? Why is the fertilizer going down? Is it actually putting down fertilizer? That is interesting. It shouldn't be, should it? Doesn't say it is. Oh, that's... <laughs> okay, I don't know what's up with that. I'm like, why is there just a bright green spot of fertilizer there? Oh, you know what? Oh. That's weird. Okay, so I know why, but it's because we don't own Field 28 here. Uh, the, the soil information, I should say. We don't own the soil information here for Field 28, so... Ah, uh, that's what... That's kind of annoying, that one. I never even thought about that. Uh, not enough... Oh, oops. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll go get some more money. Let's see what's here. We'll just borrow, like, another 100000 or something like that. Please wait while I rapidly clip my keyboard. 5,000 at a time. Yep, yep. I love doing this, Giants. You know, this is just so much fun, borrowing $5,000 at a time. Can I sue them after I get carpal tunnel from this? Seems like that'd be the appropriate punishment for them. Oh, and you know what? I should probably go start the worker again, too, because he has indeed stopped. Uh, where is he? Right there. Ah, for some reason he wants to be paid, huh? I don't quite understand that, but oh well. Okay, there we go. Back to planting. And with that, I'm looking at the time here. It looks like it is, unfortunately, time to wrap it up here for this episode. So I'll probably try to uh, complete this field here off camera. We'll see what's how it goes. Again, finish planting. And then I also want to weed it and roll it. So I don't, we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll come back next episode and we'll do some rolling and weeding. We'll see how it goes. But uh, for now, one, thanks for watching. You folks have any comments and or questions, be sure to throw them down below. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Until next time.